Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. We're gonna do another rehousing into another bioactive enclosure. This is actually one I set up over two months ago. I got a huge shipment of materials from the Bio Dude, and I've been setting up the bioactive enclosures. This is one I set up that I was originally going to put a Nandu Chromatis in, but decided that the enclosure wasn't gonna be right once the Nandu put on some more size. So I switched things up. We will still do one for the Nandu Chromatis. I know a lot of people are excited about that, but I'm gonna to have to buy a different, longer, more, appropriate enclosure for it. For this one, we're gonna use Tarina Pelma Sazme. I have two of these. They'll both be getting these enclosures, but I was really excited to get these guys into one. I think it's a perfect setup for it. So we'll see how that goes. Also, at the end of the video, what I will probably do, because I have done a bunch of husbandry videos on this, the P. Sosmes, is I will include the older ones in where I usually, what I usually do is at the end, I'll put the uh, suggested video for whoever's watching, and then I put like the most current. This one, I'll probably put the two Sosme ones. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, that way people can go look how to take care of these, because I do have videos chronicling them from, I believe larger slings all the way to now with our adults. So this is kind of a cool thing now where I'm finally coming full circle and we've got the whole gamut from right from babies all the way to adults. So I'll try to include those as well. So enough of me talking, let's get on to the actual rehousing. All right, I've been waiting a while to do this one. We are going to rehouse my Tarina Pelma Sazme, one of mine, and this is the enclosure I set up. This was some of the stuff sent to me by the Bio Dude. I set this one up about two months ago. I think it might even be over two months. So what we have here, Golden Pothos, we have Fetonia. This is the one I was able to keep alive. This one's actually doing quite well. I want to get some more lights. So we get more of the purples in there. And then the Bio Dude's Terra Arania Substrate, Leaf Litter, Cork bark, everything in here was bio dude, I think, except this one. I bought this one afterwards because I wanted something for the front. But the plants have been doing beautifully. One of the things I've been more careful with is making sure the plants are situated and acclimated before putting the spider in. I gave a lot of thought onto what to put into this enclosure. And we ended up with the Sazme because they're usually out in the open. Of course, mine just went underneath, so this is going to be fun. Now, these guys, just a heads up, I get a lot of people. They're pretty spiders. They're blue spiders. I get a lot of folks asking if they make good beginners. My answer would be no. They absolutely do not. Uh, mine, to start off, I had them in vials. They were burrowing, and I kept the substrate moist, and they were fine. They were, like, totally normal slings. Once they hit about three and a half inches or so, they became very, very skittish. I would get threat postures all over the place. I haven't had much hair kick, but they will stand their ground and throw up a threat posture, which looks pretty impressive. They are also quite fast, and I've had them bolt around after throwing a threat posture, but again, not into the burrow. So something to think about if you're eyeing these and you're just getting in the spiders, you're like, I really want to get one of these. Before you ask, just be aware they can be rather nasty. Mine have calmed down more lately. We'll see how it goes now. I was just telling Billy, I'm sure it's going to put on a show, especially now that it's gone under its hide. But one thing that's been written about these guys is that they're highly moisture dependent. I did keep the slings moist, but if you read up on them, the area they're from, they have periods where it's very, very moist and rainy and downpouring all the time, and they get a lot of uh, rain. And then they have periods where it's very, very dry. So they seem to be quite adaptable. So we're going to go ahead and try to get this one out of here as quickly as possible and hopefully without any issues. And I'll talk a little bit more once we get going. And that's it, grabbing the tongs. I'm not going to be, I'll admit, that startled me. There we go. Oh, it's already in threat posture. So, is it a beginner? Survey says. No. So there we go. We got her in here. I'm hoping to get a good shot of those blues because they really are, they're ones that look a little bit darker in the light when the light's not on them, but you get them in sunlight and bright light and those blues really tend to pop. And she's actually being a total sweetheart. And one of the things, I have a lot of people ask about the catch cups. What I like about the catch cups, it stops the airflow. What generally triggers these guys, their hairs are a sense organ. So when you whip open the containers, they can feel the change in air pressure very, very well. And that tends to trigger them. Now, if you put the cup over top of them, you can see it's calmed down quite a bit because there's not a lot of airflow in here. It's feeling kind of secure, secure. Their eyesight isn't particularly great. So that's not bothering them as much as the air hitting them. So we're gonna go ahead and try to get this one in. It's the only problem with the bioactives is trying to get the spiders out. Let me go with the other end. I want to go 
back. And you don't want to attack it. There she is, and unfortunately, she's been, she molted a while back. I was going to move her, but this enclosure wasn't ready. I want to get her while well, the blues are nice and vibrant, but they do tend to have more of that vibrancy right after they molt, and then it dulls out a little bit. But even there, you can see some of the blue, and I'll probably include a picture I've got of one of mine. Actually, I think it's in the intro. There's one of mine that is completely unaltered where you can see just how bright they are. But as slings, expect one that is going to burrow. It's going to hide. I do keep, I did keep the substrate moist at all times. Once they hit the juvenile phase, that's when I transferred them into something a little bit larger. I believe it was about a quart. After that, they went into the shoe box that I just took it out of. I get these from Amazon. I will put the dimensions and the makeup there because I always, I think it's M design, but I always screw this one up. And now it's in a, whoops. We have a new microphone and there's a cord here. So now it's in the new bioactive enclosure, which is 12 by 12 by 12. Before people ask, the spider is about overall maybe five and a half inches or so. The height of this enclosure at its tallest is about seven. So that should not be an issue for fall damage. I know there's a lot of concern about putting them in taller enclosures, but the spider should not have an issue. And the places where it's a little bit taller, there's a plant or something. The water dish is naturalistic. Thank you for people on the last video that pointed out that when these things leak, you can cover the inside with some silicone, which seals them up so they'll work better. And I do like the way they look. The pothos started off about half that size. So in two months, it's really growing. So I'll be trimming that one off soon and probably planting the clipping so I have more of them because I do like the golden pothos because I can't seem to kill it because I do have a black thumb. And the only issue I found, and I'm going to point out the fact that I've replaced the screen on here because they can get their toe claws caught in the screen. I've seen it happen. So for people to say it's not very likely, I've seen it happen before. And so what we do is replace it with plexiglass. The only problem with these lids is that they're very, very tight fitting. So it can be difficult trying to get them back into place. That's the only issue I've had where the screens, when the screen's in here, there's a little more give to get it out. And this is the, I think I mentioned the dimension, but it's the Exoterra variety. So it has the opening doors in the front. You can open the top. And what we'll do here is probably allow, right now there are springtails in it. We'll allow these plants to dry out a little bit and then I add more water in, keep everything nice and watered. And the good thing about these enclosures is, and hopefully this will show up. I'll put a flashlight on it for a minute, but you can see the water level. That's the dryer substrate up top water level on the bottom. I do moisten with a spray bottle the top part to keep the springtails alive. Hopefully that's showing up. Sorry for the super glare, but we're using an actual light and not the light on the camera this time. So, so there we go. Tarina Pelma Sazme, Brazilian blue, absolutely gorgeous species. Not one I would recommend for beginners at all. And part of it's you have to keep them moist a little bit early on. Part of it is that attitude they pick up. But as you can see, mine, although she was throwing up a pretty impressive threat posture, there were no fangs. She never once, well, except for the very beginning, bit at the thing. And I think that was more with her legs. It's more for show. But they can be very skittish. And mine did go through a phase where I wouldn't have played with them very much because they will slap at the ground, which can be intimidating to somebody just getting into it. But besides that, medium growth rate. I keep them in around 70s all year long, higher 70s up to 80 in the summer, lower 70s in the winter. I do keep part of the substrate usually moist at all times, although they don't show a preference once they put on some size. And they're great eaters. I love watching these guys eat pretty voracious hunters, although they are one of the ones that if you surprise them, they will sometimes slap at the prey item with a threat pose and then later on settle down and realize, oh, I could eat this. But Great spiders, awesome. Hopefully they still remain in the hobby because there's some discussion about some of the Brazilian species now and this one's on the list, but fingers crossed we're able to keep and breed these guys because they really need to be in the hobby. So that will do it for this one. Tarina Pelma, Sazme, Brazilian Blue. All right, so again, I know a lot of people want updates for these, but I want to give them a chance to set up first and have the plants kind of bloom, show the spiders setting up before I do any updates. There will be some coming soon, I promise. It's not that I'm trying to hold anything back. It's just I don't think it's realistic to go, all right, I just put my spider in this new house, and then literally a week later, look at they're doing great. I want to give it some time. So, for example, the Ophilopinus that I rehoused, one of the plants died. That didn't go as well as I would have hoped. I'm going to be pulling the dead plant out and replanting another one in there, and I will do a video on that. 
And but the majority of them are doing quite well now and thriving. And I'm actually having to go around and do some pruning for the first time, which is cool. So I will keep people updated on this. And hopefully this one's got a molt in its future soon. And I can get some pictures or some video of it after they molt because it, the blues really do shine the best right after a molt. So that'll do it for this one. Again, if you haven't caught any of my videos before, well, actually, what we're going to do is put the old Sazme videos in here. If you liked it enough that you'd like to subscribe, very much appreciated. You can click that right up there. As always, love getting comments. I answer every single comment I get. At least I try to. If I miss one, please call me out on it, but I do try to answer every single one. Sometimes it takes me a little while to get to them because I get a lot of them, but hope to see you guys in the comments section, and we'll catch you next time.